Good afternoon. Today we're going to cover Chapter 6, Auditor's Responsibilities and Objectives, and we're going to add a few pages from Chapter 9, the Audit Risk Model. Audit Objective 200, the overall objective of the auditor is to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free and material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, thereby enabling the auditor to express an opinion on whether the financial statements are presented fairly. Notice that almost every time we say material misstatement, we follow it with whether due to fraud or error. If we look at the auditor's responsibility section of the standard audit report, our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Almost the same. That last little clause is a little different. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to learn one or the other. I'm probably going to learn this and substitute it for 200. Now, if the teacher doesn't give me full credit, so be it. Uh, the teacher will know I pretty much understand it, and I can deal with the little partial credit here and there. Reasonable assurance. A high but not absolute level of assurance. Think of what about the opinion paragraph in the standard audit report. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects. In all material respects. Nobody's financial statements are perfect. Uh, we don't have to say they are perfect, but are they fairly presented in all material respects? Auditing standards define materiality as the magnitude of an omission or misstatement of accounting information that in light of surrounding circumstances makes it probable the judgment of a reasonable person relying on that information would have been changed or influenced by the omission or the misstatement. Probable is not just a word. To an accountant, we've got three primary uh, degrees of uncertainty, probable, reasonably possible, and remote. So in accounting, to accountants, uh, there's a big difference between probable and reasonably possible or remote. So that probable is a big word in there. From our statistics class, we remember that the larger the sample, as long as it's a random sample, or the sample's representative of the population, the lower the risk that we'll reach the wrong conclusion. Similarly, the more audit evidence the partner has, the lower the risk they will reach the wrong conclusion about the account, as long as the evidence is appropriate and relevant. Whenever we talk about misstatements, uh, we, we, it's whether due to fraud or error. So this chapter introduces the concept of fraud in financial statements. Uh, there's two kinds. We're really worried about fraudulent financial reporting. Unless we're talking about financial instruments, it's very hard to steal enough uh, from a company uh, to materially affect their financial statements. Uh, financial instruments aside, but we're worried about fraudulent financial reporting where it's much easier to steal. So if I'm the CFO and I misstate earnings by a couple cents per share, that may greatly increase my stock options. So fraudulent financial reporting is really big, and we're, that's what we're worried about, fraudulent financial reporting. We have direct effect illegal acts, those actions that have an effect on the financial statements, and then there's indirect. So there's lots of illegal acts going on, but are they going to have a direct effect on the financial statements? 
Um, somebody gets a parking ticket with a company car. Is that an illegal act? Yes. Do investors care? No. It's my understanding that UPS, uh, we all have seen those brown trucks, and I'm sure at one time or another, every one of us has got stuck behind one of them as they double park downtown and deliver a package. That's illegal. They're not allowed to double park. It's my understanding that UPS has told their drivers that they will pay any tickets they receive, but they don't want them driving around the block six times looking for a parking place. So that's an illegal act. Yes, nobody cares because it's not going to have a, a, an effect on the financial statements. Professional skepticism. Uh, we're responsible for this throughout the whole quarter. There's three parts to it. An attitude that includes a questioning mind, being alert to conditions that may indicate a possible misstatement due to fraud or error, and a critical assessment of audit evidence. Thank you, and there's two more parts to this chapter.